Hello Toads and Toadettes. I've played a lot of 3D Zelda, and the highlight for pretty much every 3D Zelda is the dungeons. But yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm looking at you two. They are big parts of each game and are where the heart of the puzzles are. And for those of you that do not know, Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game. Some say it tried too hard to be edgy, but what it did do made it feel special. I think that is perfectly reflected with Snow Peak Ruins. The ambience of the abandoned ruins of Snow Peak Mansion, Yeddo and Yedda, and the looming track in the background are just the tip of the iceberg for this wonderfully designed snow themed dungeon. So I want to really introduce this dungeon and I'm going to do that with where it takes place in the story. This dungeon had big shoes to fill as it takes place right after Arbiter's Ground which is also one of my favorite dungeons of all time as well. And it's around the time where the game starts to pick up the pace. Ganondorf is now put into the picture and you are now on a race to collect the pieces of the Mirror of Twilight. And coincidentally one lands at Snow Peak. From Zora's Domain, you can head over to Snow Peak and scale the mountain and then eventually slide down with your boy Yeddo. Yeddo is a Yeti type creature that lives with his wife Yeda at Snow Peak Mansion. And Yeddo's wife Yeda has fallen ill, which they assume is a cause of the Mirror of Twilight. So they lock it in their bedroom and it is your job to find it. And man, is Snow Peak Ruins just a place to be. I would get sidetracked just looking at what was in this mansion. But man, does Snow Peak Ruins just leave so much mystery with it. There's paintings of familiar looking areas and familiar faces, as well as weapons and furniture fit for humans. And even though this dungeon can be linear, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. At first, Yetta tries to recollect her memory of where she left the bedroom key, and she gives Link some locations. But due to her poor memory, all Link finds is an Ordon pumpkin and then some Ordon goat cheese. The cool thing about this though, is these items may seem useless. You can actually go to Yeddo and he will improve his soup. If you have an empty bottle, you can take some of this soup to regenerate hearts. It's basically just a safe spot, which no other dungeon really has. Eventually you do end up finding the bedroom key, but before we continue along any further, we have to talk about the dungeon item. The ball and hammer is given to Link after defeating the mini boss of the dungeon, Dark Hammer. This mini boss is very cool, as you're trapped in a thin and narrow hallway, with the Dark Hammer just swinging the ball and hammer around. Using the claw shot, you can defeat him and obtain the ball and hammer. Not only can the ball and chain be used to break through stuff like ice and rocks, which can help Link get through this dungeon, it can also be used in combat, as it instills a lot of damage on enemies. Obviously, it does make him slow, so you gotta be careful with when you use it, but I still think it's very dope how versatile this item is. Overall, I think this is one of the best dungeon items in Twilight Princess. Using the item and your wits, you can get through the many fun puzzles of this dungeon, which takes you to the inevitable bedroom. When you arrive here with Yetta, the mirror possesses her, which after a unsettling cutscene, she transforms into Blizzetta. The Twilight Ice Mass is not one of my favorite designs for a boss in Twilight Princess, but the boss fight is still very solid. She will just try to throw some ice spikes at you, which you can use the reflection of the ice on the floor to see. But yeah, then Link can use his ball and chain when Blizzetta is vulnerable. After the long fought battle, Yetta is free and Yeddo comes to her aid, and the most heartwarming cutscene of the game ensues, with Yeddo just embracing Yetta with a bunch of recovery hearts coming out, and eventually your heart container. And then Link can go on his merry way and just pretend like nothing happened and just grab that mirror of Twilight and get back to the quest. There you go, that is Snow Peak Ruins. It's been years since I last played through Twilight Princess, and I think the dungeons in these games are just an absolute highlight, but Snow Peak Ruins is a dungeon that still stays on my mind to this day with how cleverly designed it was. And there's just so much more charm and secrets to find that I just have to recommend you play through Twilight Princess if you haven't for yourself. And also, I didn't even mention the music, dude. The music is just so ambient and so amazing. But uh, enough chitter chatter about Twilight Princess and Snow Peak Ruins. You've got the gist. This dungeon's amazing. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps out the channel. One of the employees at Nintendo told me, if you subscribe to my channel right now, they will shadow drop Twilight Princess HD Deluxe on Nintendo Switch. 
And if you want to see more Zelda content or just more Nintendo content in general, I definitely recommend checking out my channel. And on that note, guys, I will see you in the next one.